So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview, broadcast and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and American League Baseball capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. Today is a good day to start an argument with your best friends or a bunch of strangers at a bar. Today's the day we're going to debate the priorities of Robert Tuckman's new book, The 100 Sporting Events You Must See Live. Honestly, I think he got it wrong right off the top, listing the Masters as the number one event you have to see live. The Masters? Come on. Golf isn't even a real sport. Spectacle, yes. Sport, no. See how easy it is to start an argument off this stuff? Robert, welcome to Mr. Media. Wow, Bob, what an introduction. I'm really excited now to come on. <laughs> wow, you like to you throw that you threw the left hook right off the bat. I thought you were going to, you know, give me a nice introduction, anything along those lines, but but I guess not. You got right into the meat of it. Oh, well, come on, Robert. You seriously, I mean, you rank a golf tournament above the World Cup, Super Bowl, and World <laughs> Series. I mean, I assume that you're just being provocative, right? You well, I believe that. You, you know, actually it's funny, uh just with my background, I've been in the business for the last 15 years, and, and we take people, the, the business I'm in with Premier Global Sports is taking people to these events, and I've been able or fortunate enough to go to a lot of these events like the Masters, the Super Bowl, and I will say this, like yourself, I'm, I'm not a big golfer or golf fan, but the first time I went down to Augusta and went to the Masters, it was an incredible experience, just everything from the landscape to the people and the community, how they really get behind that event. And the only word I could use to describe it is magical. And uh, really, that, that's why this one topped the charts. And, and, and really, this is about the overall experience, the few days that you're going to be on site at this event, um, really just in, in terms of not only you know, the two hours or three hours you're watching an event, but it's really about all of the other stuff that goes on as well. Well, and I, like I said, I will grant you that it, it's probably a tremendous spectacle. And certainly, if you're a, a a man or woman of color or a woman, you go to that you go to that event and you think, hmm, how, am I going to be welcome here in ten minutes? Hmm, I wonder. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, not well, a sport. it's not it's not a sport. You can't compare golf to the World Cup or or the Super Bowl. I mean, it, you know, show me a guy on a golf course who's sweating for any reason other than it's over ninety degrees. Yeah, well, as I said, I'm not, I agree with you, I'm not a big golf fan, I'm more of a baseball, football, basketball guy, that, that's what I play, I, I, golf just frustrates me too much, but really what, what kind of got me into the Masters and that whole event was the first year that Tiger Woods actually won the event, and just going there and just being part of history and, and really just seeing, you know, what this event was all about, the excitement, the energy, uh, and that's what that's what it's about. That's why, you know, this is number one. Now, well, millions of people might getting emails and nasty calls from uh, people in Australia who are saying the rugby match should be, you know, number one, and, you know, how do you not have the World Cup? Uh, our friends in, in Europe saying, how's that? You know, what the Masters, come on, just like you. And, and th there's, there's, there's obviously a good argument there, but, you know, there only could be no, one number one, and, and we talked about the overall experience. But those events like the Mass, the, the World Cup and, and Super Bowl, I mean, they're tremendous, awesome events. And, and just uh, obviously that's why uh, I listed them so high. Now, did you, uh, did you give some thought to listing the events uh, without putting them in order, or is that? I mean, that's that's part of the fun of even having you on the show, frankly. <laughs> exactly. I like this way, you know. if I if I didn't put them in order, then you couldn't have had that introduction. You couldn't have written me, and <laughs> and people people want to get excited. You know that that's what, like you said in, in your intro. You know, people sitting at the bar and and talking and saying, you know, I, and that's how I got the idea for this book was. You know, anywhere I went and talked to people, they'd always want to know, what, what's your favorite event? What's your fa You know, oh, how could you put say that's your favorite event? This one's the one you have to go to. And that, that's really what this is about. And if you don't rank them like that, then unfortunately you, you, you can't bring out the passion in, in people and, and to, to list things. And, of course, as, uh, you know, uh, someone who loves sports and is competitive, uh, you know, what else uh, could you have an event without keeping a score? So, you know, that, that, that's why I put them in order. I want to say if anyone's listening has got a question for Robert or 
like myself, would like to challenge him on something. Uh, <laughs> I think he's a sporting enough guy. He can handle it. Uh, uh, give us a call, uh, 646-595-3135. And I'll repeat that Robert is the author of 100, the 100 Sporting Events You Must See Live. And he's also the founder of Premier Corporate Events, uh, formerly TSE. Uh, so yeah, we'd like to you know we'd like to hear from you. And by the way, you can uh, check out his uh, his website, his company website. It's uh, I think this is current. Is this www.tseworld.com or is there a yeah that that that'll get you there. Um, we we're in transition. We've got like a, a few uh, a few sites now that all lead to the same site, which is premiersports.com. And that's a premiere with an E at the end. And, you know, on that site, we also have a, a sportstravel.com, which is all of these event packages if you're interested in going to events. Um, but they all lead to the same place. Um, and pretty much we're all under one roof now. My company, TSE Sports Entertainment, was acquired in 06 by the Premier Global Sports. And uh, Premier Global uh, now incorporates a few other companies as well. So, uh, we're a, a hospitality player, and we do official travel for a lot of teams, leagues, and really like uh, that's how I kind of came up with this idea. Everyone would always ask me, you know, what's your favorite event? You go to so many, or you work at so many, well, what's the one I have to go to? And that's another reason I just had the idea to write this book. How long did it take you to put the book together? And, you know, did you, did you, have you been to all 100 events? No, I, w I, I certainly wish. This is my bucket list. This is the events that I know I need to get to over the course of my lifetime. And really, um, what, what uh, the, the amount of events that I've been to is, is, is pretty uh, – I thought I would have had more, but I've only been to, uh, I think, 38, um, just almost 40. I'm going to be to 40 after I uh, attend the Little League World Series this summer. <laughs> Um, and and, uh, and and that will, will get me there. The most I've, I've seen anyone get is uh, Harvey Schiller, who used to be president of the Yankees, told me he was at like 48 of the events, and Jim Steig, who's the COO or president of the San Diego Chargers, used to run events for the NFL. Uh, he was in, in the same neighborhood as, as Harvey. So uh, I, I got a book to, to Chris Berman, and I'm going to find out uh, how many he's been to, but I'm sure someone in the media – uh, and you might know this, uh, has probably been to the most events on the list. That would be interesting to find out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing how people get really competitive and how much they, uh, you know, are interested in seeing how many events they've been to. Uh, as again, it's competition, it's sports, that's what it's about. Now, I, I, number two on the list, I, I have to say, I get that completely, and I think, I think the list makes perfect sense from number two on. Uh, yep. The number two is uh, the World Cup. I mean, you know, manly action, usually beyond the reach of American sports fans, though, because it rarely takes place on this continent. Uh, have you been to, you've been to a World Cup? Yeah, I was there in 06. I saw the World Cup uh, in Germany, and I, I certainly remember what it was like in 94 when it did take place here in the U.S. And I think at that time... Uh, we were we were much less informed as a, a general sports public here in the U.S. as to the magnitude um, of soccer uh, around the world, and I think that kind of woke up a lot of people, including our our uh, uh, U.S. teams, and and really um, what this event's all about. But it's just like you said, it's an amazing spectacle. Um, just seeing these groups of fans from all over these different countries and the passion they have for this event. It's really the event that the whole world kind of stops to watch, and, and that's the difference between this event, uh, even more so than an Olympics, uh, and, and of course more so than a Super Bowl. So it, it's pretty impressive uh, the amount of people who kind of get behind this event, and usually the host countries do such a good job. You know, when I was in Germany, if you didn't have a ticket to the game you wanted to go to, I mean, there were tons of fans coming in who, you know, they'd set up big screen TVs and have kind of parties in the park, and they usually do that. They're going to do that in Africa in 2010, and really one that I'd like to go to uh, would be 2014 in Brazil. Yeah, you know what? I, I, was, I was actually in Brazil uh, last May, Shortly after, I guess it was announced that they were going to get the World Cup, and they're already excited. I mean, the, oh, they I'm, probably went nuts. It was probably like carnival every day. Oh my God, I was there on a uh, on a fam tour, you know, familiarization yep. tour for a magazine, and uh, you know, they already had for part of their, you know, their their 
a packet of stuff that they give out to reporters. Sure. You know, there was uh, there was the little toy uh, 2014 soccer ball and the T-shirts and yeah, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be the. I mean, if you want to see a uh, a World Cup, I would think Brazil would be the place to go. Yeah, I would say as a number one place for an event, uh, you know, definitely in Brazil. And that's the other thing with a lot of these events. You know, some events I picked out, like the BCS Championship game, but I said, you know, the real place you got to see the BCS Championship game is in New Orleans. And, you know, there are some of those events. If I had a Yankees-Red Sox game, it was seeing it at Yankee Stadium, although I did have a game at Fenway Park on the list. And, and I mean, that, that's what it's also about. It's about the location of the event and where it's taking place and what that city you know, means to the event, uh, you know, look at the Olympics. That's really what that event's all about is the culture of the host city or host country. Uh, and that's what makes it really special. Uh, but that's what I took into consideration as well when I was putting the list together for 100 sporting events you must see live. Well, um, one of the things you do here is that you talk about, obviously, I mean, if you were just saying go to the event, that would be a 100-page book. And somehow yeah. you've not to Let's take a look here. 337 pages. <laughs> uh, you, fill, you fill the book with other information, uh, how to get tickets for yep. these events, travel packages. Uh, amazingly, Premier Corporate Events is a place that offers... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said in the shopping. introduction, as I said in the introduction, I am biased. And I'm going to tell you a good company when I know it. So I, I kind of put it out there, um, and I kind of uh, let the reader know that, listen, if, uh, especially in this business, you want to use a company that uh, does travel that you can rely on. That's important. But like you said, the, the big difference between this book and the other books that are out there and then just do lists is I really took my – um, training or learning from the past 15 years of sending people to these events to really put it into a Fromers-like guide where I tell people what's the best way to watch these events. So how do I find hotel space tickets? Um, what are some of the other parties that take place during these events? And that's really the insider knowledge that I tried to express, and, and that's the difference between buying this book and buying any of these list books, this is really a guide that you can use. And I got the idea because I was on a plane coming back from Las Vegas, and I was reading a book review for a book called A Thousand Places to See Before You Die. And it's kind of like a bucket list for the, 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 uh, the traveler that likes to uh, see all different places around the world. And I said, well, you know, I love to travel, but I love to travel for sporting events. And I am an avid sports fan, and there's got to be – I've got to have a bucket list and uh, that's how the book came about. Well, uh, Robert, we've got a call here. Let's see if they're calling for you. <laughs> you never know. I hope so. Uh, no, it could be your wife, right? <laughs> Hi, do you have a comment or question for Robert Tuckman? Hello? Hello? Three, two. Yep, you're on. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is 322. This is Brussels, Belgium. I'm oh. calling from Brussels, Belgium. My name is Tejinder. I'm a oh. journalist. Uh, actually, I'm uh, moving to relocating to Washington uh, on 27th, and I was wondering where can I go to learn about the American ball games? Silence, Robert. Are you there? Yes, I am here. Well, that's a think? that's a good that's <laughs> a good question because I think uh, as soon as you get here from Belgium and you land in D.C. Uh, the first thing I would tell you not to do is go see a Nationals game because you're going to think that uh, you're probably uh, going to think that uh, baseball uh, isn't all it's cracked up to be. But I do think that the best thing that you can do is immerse yourself in a local community and you'll see the passion of the fans. The nice thing is is the Washington Redskins are a, a huge uh, organization uh, within the National Football League, which really has kind of become – in a way, our national pastime, or at least where fans are uh, looking, you know, at, at a sport now that is growing. Um, and I, I would say the best thing you can do is you can look at going to a Redskins game. You can look at going to, you know, a Nationals game when they're playing a good team like the Devil Rays or someone like that. Um, and and basically, that's what I would do is look at the local uh, uh, events that are taking place. And then also what you might want to do is, um, as the progress into the fall and you're here, uh, look at the Army-Navy game, which isn't too far away. They usually play it in Pennsylvania. 
Uh, there's a bunch of uh, events in the book that take place in the mid-Atlantic states. So uh, that's how I would really start off, and then you'll, you'll grow and you'll get into further events, and you might want to even go attend the Super Bowl in Miami come next February. Oh, thank you. Sure. I, I actually – I might have suggested, uh, depending on which American sports, uh, you know, if it was football or baseball, actually almost any sport, uh, I would encourage you to go f- seek out uh, the nearest college. Uh, where you happen to uh, find residence here uh, when you're in Washington, because the college games are, are, are sometimes the purest uh, way that they're played. You know, uh, um, uh, Robert, help me out here. If he's in Washington, D.C. Well, you can go, and that's a really good suggestion, Bob. You can look at going to uh, Georgetown is yeah. uh, one of the schools there that has a very good basketball program. Uh, for college basketball and, uh, you know, in terms of the purity of the sport, uh, like Bob says, you know, you're watching college kids who aren't multimillionaires, so there's certainly an opportunity, uh, but also it's top-level basketball. It's Georgetown, but even if you look at some of the other local schools like American and um, um, Maryland is close by as well if you want to see college football. Uh, those are great opportunities and, and cheaper tickets as well uh, if you're looking to uh, attend. And, I mean, even if you get real brave, you might want to even go down to the high school level. Uh, the D.C., Maryland area is some of the best high school basketball uh, in the country uh, with Dunbar and, and some of the other schools there where you can go and probably uh, get in free to most games or buy a ticket for a few dollars. So. That's what I would suggest, uh, you know, and take out, uh, get the newspaper, see, start reading the sports section, and, you know, I, I would advise you to stay away from becoming a Nationals fan because it's not going to make <laughs> you happy for a long time. You know, pick pick the good teams. That's a nice thing when you move to another country. You get to pick whichever team you like, and, you know, everyone comes and they pick the Yankees or the, the Lakers or, you know, you, you move to England and you, you're rooting for Manchester United. Uh, but that's one of the opportunities you get when you move to a new area. Thank you. Yeah, sure. sure. Thanks for calling, and uh, good luck with the move. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was that was an interesting... Uh... Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the guy, uh, obviously, is uh, looking. He, he enjoys sports. He's calling from Belgium to talk about American sports. you got to admire that. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I probably would have added that uh, at those same colleges, he can probably find uh, more familiar sports, uh, 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 you know, uh, European football, soccer uh, here. And I think that uh, does Washington, doesn't Washington have a professional uh, soccer franchise? Yeah, they do. They have an MLS team. Soccer's pretty big uh, in that area. Um, but that's, that's one, the one thing you don't want to do is when you come here from like Belgium or anywhere <laughs> like Europe is watch soccer because – it's just amazing the difference in the levels between uh, European soccer and, and what we have here. Uh, it, it's amazing how, uh, how different it is, unfortunately. Uh, I was watching, a, you know, the, the great thing, too, now is, as I say, get to events. Uh, but the great thing now is uh, with cable networks, you can watch, like, some of these Premier League matchups, which is great. Um, on television each day, which which I do, and then you know I want to go to a Premier League game, uh, you know. So yeah. so basically, uh, you know, the world's becoming a lot smaller, uh, which is great, and um, really uh, it's made the international events much more of interest to, to people like myself who now can follow it on cable. I saw last summer we were in Toronto and we saw uh, a Los Angeles Galaxy uh, Toronto FC match. That was uh, very cool. Of course, we, we, we went because it was supposed to be um, – uh, oh, what, why am I drawing a blank? Um, the uh, British soccer player had come over to the Galaxy. Um, Beckham. Beckham, thank you. David Beckham. It was supposed to be David Beckham's uh, debut with the Galaxy up in Toronto, and then, of course, he wasn't ready to play, so my wife and daughter were very disappointed. But I still enjoyed the game a great deal. It was, uh, it was definitely a higher-level uh, – than, than we would normally see here in Florida, and certainly a higher level than the girls I coach in middle school. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. Um, now, I would hope so, but uh, yeah, oh, you know. for sure. Now, I, I read that uh, the uh, the Ironman triathletes are unhappy with you because you're one of them. You, 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 you <laughs> well, you know, it's, 
You still you, you only rank the Iron Man at 50, 51. Yeah, I told all those guys they should just be happy that I put it on the list. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, even even though I gotta I gotta hear them and work with them, you know, when when I'm training or you know going to uh, to an event, it's kind of funny. But uh, you know, I told uh, I told them that they should just be happy uh, that it's up there, and, 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 it, and it almost cracked the top fifty. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's funny though. But you're uh, you're an athlete yourself, a triathlete. I pretend to be one. I love to uh, I love to exercise and and uh, run and jog. These days, uh, I did a couple triathlons, Ironmans, and uh, did Lake Placid Ironman in 2004 and 2005. These days, I just usually uh, playing pickup basketball or softball, um, uh, tennis. Uh, I love. I, I always have enjoyed sports. I mean, that's why I got involved in uh, in in sports initially is I just had such a passion. I said, you know what, I'm going to spend my life doing something. I'd rather do something I love. And, and that's why, you know, it just worked out that I got it into this business and I spent my days going to these big sporting events. And certainly it's a, it, it's a lot of work. It's not like you're going and enjoying them, but I'd rather be doing this than something I didn't really enjoy or like. Now I'm curious, uh, this is a tough time for, uh, Corporate events and meetings. I uh, it sure is. Um, I, for the last twenty years, I, I've written for a magazine called Corporate Meetings and Incentives Magazine. Yep. And not only do I know that the you know corporate meet well everyone I think everyone knows that the corporate meetings and incentives business is down, but even I mean the magazines that publish them are are, yeah. are hurting. Um, how uh, you know how does that affect a guy who who you know his company has relies on those types of things. I, I think that's my understanding anyway. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, that's right. I mean, our business is, is unfortunately down and, you know, it doesn't help when, you know, uh, you get people coming on, uh, saying, you know, we don't want these companies, uh, people in Congress or, or even the president saying, you know, don't travel to Las Vegas, don't travel to the Super Bowl. I mean, that's just asinine when you think about it because it's not so much that corporate exec who's enjoying this trip or the, you know, and that's not what it's about first off. As you would know better than anyone, Bob, it's about incentives for businesses and that helps grow business. Anytime you incentivize people, that's what they're incentivized by. But it's really about the guy at the hotel who's the bus boy or he's a... Oops. Um... Somehow we lost Robert. Um, can, uh, Robert, uh, there you are. You're back. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I was saying, you know, it's about yeah. the, um, the the hotel workers and the tra- guy who drives the limo or, you know, that's all the people you're affecting. Those are the people who are losing money, losing jobs. And, and, and the, the travel business, I mean, it's billions and billions of dollars. And don't forget, the government makes a lot of money off taxes in that business as well in travel. So it just makes no sense to tell people that you still have to incentivize people. You still have to run events. Uh, you know, that's how business is done. And, and mm. unfortunately, uh, it just got a, a, a bad name. Well, of course, you know, when, when the companies that are in the news uh, for, you know, losing piles and piles of their own money and their investors' money and their their employees' uh, benefit money, and, and then they announce that they're going to take a half a million dollar incentive trip or, or meeting to a, a you know exclusive resort. Uh, th- that's really what I think hurts more than the president saying, don't make that trip. You know, when they, they, they these companies do things that make it seem like they're just, you know, flying in the face of common sense. And Well, I think, and, I think it's also, though, you know, how, if someone says, hey, I'm going to do an incentive and People don't understand when they look at an incentive or the, a trip, they look, they think it's a boondoggle. They think it's, okay, right. we're going to, you know, Mexico, we're going to go party. But, you know, it, it, someone wrote a really good uh, piece on that. Actually, it was uh, in one of these magazines I was reading, and it, it was the guy, uh, uh, Ben Stein, uh, you know, who's the uh, commentator on, on kind of business and, and budgets. And, and he said in that um, – you know about business meetings he said business meetings are not the enemy in terms of making the nation more productive and better off they are builders not saboteurs the truth is that business meetings are usually not a waste of time even if they're held in vegas or a resort with a golf course near southern california they are not decadent with rare exceptions and as the business meetings 
at business meetings that he goes to, he sees an incredibly heavy burden of work lies on the shoulders of those who tend. Guys are getting up at 7, having breakfast. You know, they're, they're attending meetings all day. Uh, it's not like, you know, people are out there. And, and that's what he says here. Just it's not about um, the fact that, you know, these are just parties. And, and there was, they had a quote also by this guy, Eric Andrews, who's a VP of um, – at IBM, he said, events are going to be critical for us in this economy, both in terms of reaching out to new customers and deepening relationships with our core franchise. And that's what these events are about, and that's what's really important to understand. You know, everyone, I think, jumped down the throat of, and rightfully so with places like AIG. I mean, everyone's pissed off. No one wants to see. I mean, you know, personally, I lost a lot of money in that stock, and, and, and then to see these guys taking big bonuses. But at the end of the day, Stopping these trips and incentives, you know, people just look at them the wrong way, and that that's unfortunate. It's got to be a – I mean, they have to, they have to make logical decisions, and, and certainly those that have shareholders have to, you know, you know maybe they have to postpone something until, you know, the storm passes. I mean, the storm is – in a lot of ways, the storm is passing now. Um, uh, and I apologize if I – pronounce the gentleman's name wrong, uh, but the, I believe this is the fellow who called us a little while ago, uh, Tahinder Singh from um, Brussels, uh, had, a, had a pair of questions for you uh, from the web chat. Um, he, he asked first, everyone's complaining of the economic downturn, what about sports, and are sports journalists feeling the pinch? Well, I could tell you um, from a standpoint um, of sports journalists, that, that's, that's another good question. Yeah, I mean, when there's when there's less um, budget to go around, I mean, media organizations, you know, they only have a certain amount of dollars to send people on trips. And, and journalists who write for papers, I mean, there, there's obviously uh, more to it than, than the economy right now. I mean, it's the whole way that journalism is going with the Internet and a lot of these newspapers having trouble now. So certainly journalists are feeling the pinch, um, as well as people in our business and and, and that's a reflection on the economy. The good thing is, is sports is so popular here and growing, not only here but around the world, that there is a need for more and more sports journalists. It's just in a different medium, which mostly now you see bloggers and, and uh, you know, uh, people writing for big websites and, and new media. Uh, and that's really where I think a lot of that is going. Mm. Um, just a couple more questions before we let you sure. go here. Um, have there been any other uh, decisions uh, in, in the rankings that you created that have been controversial that you've heard about from people, or is it too soon yet? No, no, I, I've heard a lot of uh, controversy. <laughs> My number five. <laughs> it's amazing when these bloggers get a hold of this list, and you know, it's a blogger for like a, uh, you know, for Formula One racing, or it's a blogger for you know who lives for. Um, you know, uh, cricket or whatever it might be. You know, these guys get pretty passionate, so it's kind of it's it's kind of funny. But um, the ones where I, I've noticed the most objective criticism is, uh, like you brought up, number one with the Masters. I mean, there's people who've been there, who go there, who understand, and, and they'll say, you know what, you got it. And then there's people who say, how could you put that ahead of the World Cup? And then the Army Navy game at number five. Uh, is is an amazing spectacle and just to be at and and again what a lot of people who start criticizing the list don't understand this book is about the overall experience it's not just hey how's Army Navy ahead of you know Auburn Alabama it, it's not a rivalry book this is a book about the entire event experiencing the event so a lot of the 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 feedback I'm getting people first have to understand that point but rightfully so I missed a couple I think I could have had um, Kentucky Louisville basketball game on the list uh, someone had brought up to me uh, was one that I'm definitely going to look at there's other events that I think might be able to move higher on the list as well uh, so it, it's been great there's been a spirited you know debate about it so I'm enjoying it so uh, the this will this be an annual kind of thing or every couple of years you think or? Oh yeah, well I'm gonna we're gonna update the book uh, at least once every two years um, at first, and if it, there's more demand, we'll we'll do it each year. Uh, but without a doubt, I, I mean things change, you know, events change, uh, and you have to update this book with relevant information. The good thing is, is the book was just published, so it's filled with, you know, everything from you know the information in there is on the new stadiums like you know, Yankees, Red Sox information on the new Yankee Stadium. I mean, everything is very good up to date, which is great. Now, I have to 
I have to both compliment you and take you to task for something. Sure. I know you'll love, you'll love this. I love getting taken to task by you, Bob. At the back of the book, there's an appendix on the top ten cities for hosting a major sporting event. Ah. And I'm, I'm thrilled that number nine is Tampa Bay, Florida, home of That's course, right. Mr. Mr. Media World Headquarters. But uh, I have to tell you that you spelled Ybor City wrong. Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> I'm going to put that one on my publisher. Is that Y-B-O-R? Yeah, it should be Y-B-O-R. It's and not, how they you spell it in the book? E B B O R. Yeah, Ooh, I don't like that. I mean, those so, copywriters these days, they can't catch anything. Got to stand up for the hometown here. Like how I blame everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to get involved in that part. But I do, I do appreciate that. Uh, hey. you know, I, I think it was, it was an app choice. I mean, there's a reason that the Super Bowl keeps coming back here. And, well, there is. Did, I mean, Tampa, Tampa's a great city for hosting uh, major sporting events. The only qualm I have every time we have an event in Tampa is it's very spread out, as you know. So if you're driving from St. Pete to Tampa, you've got to get across town. Um, you know, that, that's the difficult part. But usually with everything else, you know, in terms of uh, uh, the weather and things of that nature, uh, you know, just the, the capabilities with the hotels, I mean, there's, there's, everything is, is good enough. Um, you also have a fa- another favorite of mine here, the Florida versus Georgia football game. The, yep, uh, Jacksonville. We, the, the world's greatest the world's uh, biggest. Co- cocktail party. Yeah, which they don't, they don't let you do that because, you know, no one drinks in college anymore. They, it's, it's bad PC. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 like they've stopped. But, right, uh, exactly. It gives, but mentioning that gives me an opportunity to tell you my favorite joke. Do you, oh, do you know why... Uh, do you know why the St. John's River in Jacksonville flows north instead of south like every other river? No. Because Georgia sucks. And now, folks. Ah. Ah. Oh, you're going you're gonna, to uh, you're gonna outcast half your audience there, Bob. Uh. You, you know better than anyone as Mr. Media. You can't, it's like Michael Jordan says. They once asked him why, um, why he doesn't um, endorse the, the Democratic Party, I think, or... He said, you know what, Republicans buy sneakers too. So, but, you know, I guess you're not selling anything like I am. Yeah. So you can, you, can, uh, you can say all you want. <laughs> I, I'll take my shots. And I, I'm, I'm, hoping right. that I've, I'm hoping that I've sent our, our listener in uh, Brussels to the map to figure out Georgia and Florida <laughs> to, to get that job. I hope, I hope he is going to Washington, D.C. and not the state of Washington because then I've got to give him a whole new list of uh, events oh, to look okay. at. <laughs> well, if that's the case, uh, check out uh, Robert's uh, website, premiersports.com, Premier with an yep. E at the end, and uh, you can email him there and, and straighten yeah. that out. And we um, also have a, a website It's uh, for the book is 100, like the number 100, sportingevents.com, and you can yell at me and rip me like Bob did today and tell me what <laughs> I should have had at number one and Tell me about, uh, you know, what I missed, what I didn't miss, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, that'd be great. I'd love to hear from everyone. All right. And uh, Mr. Singh just sent us back a note in the web chat. He says, I know the geography, and it is D.C. that he's coming to. Ah, and by good. the way, he just put in a plug for his own show. I guess he's a host on Blog Talk himself. He says, listen to my show tonight, blogtalkradio.com slash sexyindia at 11. Whoa. What's that about? I don't know. I but to check I'm, that out. Maybe we should check that out. Um, <laughs> I hope that uh, you know, and it, it might sound like an adult show. <laughs> I hope so. Um, <laughs> I may be flying to Tampa more often than not. All right. Yeah, well, hey, the, Tampa, you had enough of that there. I'll tell you that Ebor City, uh, unbelievable. <laughs> I was down there. I went, I went to the actually at the Super Bowl to the Maxim party down in Ebor City, and uh, what a what a crazy part of town that is. But real, just a ton of fun. It is uh, it is a little crazy there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, folks, listen. You can find uh, Robert Tuckman's book, The 100 Sporting Events You Must See Live, at MrMedia.com or on Amazon.com or probably any good bookstore worth its salt. Uh, and I, as I said, you can also learn more about his. Well, uh, well, let's go to his book, for, his website for the book first. It's 100, the number 100, 100 SportingEvents.com, and also his company, Premier Corporate Events. Uh, they're online at www.premier with an e premiersports.com. And yeah, uh, Robert, you're you're a very good sport about this. And uh, uh, what 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 is this now? 
Okay. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I stand corrected. Somebody else got online here called Sexy India, and they're promoting their, their show. It was ah. interesting. So I stand corrected. Gotcha. Sorry for the mistake. Okay. But You're probably Robert, getting like adult spam or something over there, Bob. Yeah, it's always something. <laughs> it um, well, thanks thank for having so me much on. For, yeah, for coming on the show and uh, you know yeah. taking the abuse. You're a very good sport. and uh, <laughs> I'm good at it for my wife. Trust all right. Me. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks, Bob. To thanks a lot. Yeah, bye-bye. And folks, uh, for dozens more uh, sports-related interviews, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with uh, athletes such as uh, Bill Romanowski, Brandy Chastain, Kerry Strug, as well as sports writers, uh, ha- ha- pardon me, Harvey Frommer, Pete Gollenbach, and Pete Williams, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Pointer Online, MySpace, Facebook, NetVibes, Multiply, Zanga, Digital Journal, Friendster, Orkut, Bebo, Tagged, iGoogle, Yahoo, Podcast Pickle, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, or Odeo. I always struggle to see if I can do that in one breath. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. Subscribe to Mr. Media in iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews within the podcast section of iTunes and click the free subscribe button. It's that easy. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com, A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. Thanks for listening.